It's Pyram King, and I'm super excited to bring to you another guide to Legends of Barovia, an expanded campaign to Curse of Strahd. This is a special video. This video is about the enhancements and updates we've made to the Foundry Adventure module to the Burger Meister's Manor. Now, before we jump into this, a huge shout out to all of my supporters, especially the legendary supporters that are making all of this happen. The free PDF guides, the voice acting sound files, and yes, the Foundry Adventure modules. If you would like to support me on this epic project and gain access to the additional content, including the Foundry Adventures, such as the one we're gonna be looking at here, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description down below. Now, let's jump into this. We're going to be covering some enhancements to this Foundry adventure that we've just released in here using one of my favorite modules, Monk's Active Tile Triggers. And we're going to be doing some battle map stuff as well as some theater of the mind stuff. And the last one, I'm going to save the best for last. It's just awesome. I really, really like it. And if you like it too, make sure you smash that like button letting me know that this is the kind of content you want to see more of. Now, if you are looking for the detailed walkthrough step-by-step -step video guide of the Burgermeister's Manor, that's a separate video. There's a link in the description box down below. It covers every single room. And in addition, there's a free PDF guide to this location edited by Jesse Winter, beautiful tokens by Tuso. It's free, no obligations. Just download it. I hope you enjoy it. Now, we're going to be covering the battle map enhancements first and then the theater of the mind uh, later. And the first one we're going to be talking about is a special event. It's the Skeleton Siege at the Burger uh, Meister's Mansion. Now, let's get give you some background, some setup. We know that Lady Valker and the Burger Meister are, there's a political struggle. They're vying for power. Lady Valker, outside of Vallaki, has created a skeleton army. She's about to lay siege to Vallaki to kill the Burger Meister Isaacs, all his allies, uh, and... Well, this is an option to run. This is a skeleton, 40 skeleton combat encounter siege on the Burger Meister's Manor. And I'm going to show you how to do that here. Now, I have the 40 skeletons. You can see them. You want to make sure they're all invisible uh, around the map here. And there is a, this is also the PDF guide. There is the information on how to do that here. Now, the first thing I want to point out to is on the first floor. By the way, this is a gorgeous map. This is the WebP version uh, made by DM Andy. And if you like this, you should check out the AK version and the other ones with special effects. They're available on his Patreon page. I'll put a link in the description down below. Now, you'll notice in the key that there's 10 entrances uh, between windows and doors into the manor here. And at each one of these entrances, I have some invisible skeletons, four of them. And I'm going to show you how to run this encounter right now. Now, the first thing you want to do in here is you want to run the skeleton attack background music here. So adds a little bit of ambience uh, to the, the situation here. I'll turn it up a little bit so you can hear this here. You can hear it. It's kind of creepy. And you're going to roll the D10 twice. Now, you want to make sure that the D10 roll is uh, invisible so the players can't see it. You're going to roll it twice. And that's going to tell you where the first two break-ins are. So number six, if we look at number six, that's this window right down here. You're going to make these skeletons visible. Well, we don't know how many yet. We'll find out in a second. And the other one is number one. That's this window right here into the servants' quarters. Now, you're going to roll a 1d4 to determine how many skeletons. So we're going to roll that twice. 1d4, 1d4. So in the first location, number six, all four of these skeletons are going to break in. And up here, we only have one. So I'm going to highlight one of them and make them visible. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we have these buttons over here. Now, these buttons are sound effect buttons, and they're to alert the player that something's going on in the manor. And since these are both windows, we're going to double click on the break window button. That lets the players know that a window has been broken in the manor. You're going to run uh, initiative at this point and begin the combat encounter. And what I would do is I would take this first skeleton here and this one, bring them into the house, and then we've got these here. Uh, all of these are lit up, so they're, they're ready to come in. You're running your combat encounter at this point. At the beginning of the next round, you're going to roll, roll the 1d10 again. That's number 2, 1d4. So in the second location, right here in the den, a uh, skeleton wakes up. Right, It's come up here to the window. You can run that breaking window again. 
skeleton comes through the window. So at the beginning of each round, you're gonna roll the 1d10 and then how many skeletons come in. There are a total of 40 here. The sound here is designed to do two things. Number one, it's a cue that more skeletons coming. And number two, the type of sound determines if the players aren't in the room, they can hear some windows breaking. So the other one's the door. It doesn't have the glass at the end. So listen to this one. This is if it's the front or the back door. So this lets them know that the skeletons have broken through the front door or the skeletons have broken through the window. So that's how you run this skeleton counter here. Let me clean up the chat log and we'll turn off the, the scary skeleton music now. Now, the other thing I wanna point out here, this is true with all the updates in the Foundries to version 10 and higher, is you're gonna see these red arrows that are pointing up and down. They are monks active tiles to teleport the characters that stand on those arrows to the higher map or the lower map. So it will teleport them and change the scene for the player. <coughs> Excuse me. The next one we have is the upper floor. And one of the things that we changed in Legends of Barovia is we moved the trap door to the attic from the bedroom into this master room closet here. Now if the players look at it, they'll see a trap door uh, in the ceiling. And you can double click on this button over here and that opens up the trap door. Now what this is doing mechanically is turning on the tile and uh, showing the tile so they let them know if they stand on this tile here, they'll teleport them and change the scene up into the attic. By double clicking it again, it turns off that tile and hides it so the players can stand on it. This is to simulate opening and closing the trap door to the ceiling. The last battle map update we have is in the attic. And you'll notice here, and let me just update this, uh, make sure you give them hit points. We'll give them, I'll give them 200 hit points, why, why not? Um, you're gonna notice this red square. Now this red square is invisible to the players. Just make sure it is invisible. So players can't see it. And it's really for you, the DM, to know two things. All the characters are gonna be standing in this red square will suffer damage if they trigger the glyph of warning on the door. Now in the attic, on the way into Victor's room here, there's a glyph of warning on the door. They trigger it. Everyone in this square is going to be damaged. Now, to trigger this, you're gonna double click in this square as the GM and any character in this square is gonna suffer damage. Let's check that out. Now, what this is doing is gonna run for 10 seconds and then it's going to uh, attach the damage. Now, if you want to adjust that damage, if you feel it's too much damage, Click on the tile icon, double click on this, click on triggers, go to actions, and find the one that says hurt, and click the edit button. Change the hurt, I have it rolling a 5d8 worth of damage. You can change that to whatever fits within your campaign. So those are the triggers uh, in the, in the uh, battle maps. Now, I'm about to show you the theater of the mind maps. The first one actually is here in Victor's room. Now we know, even in Rules as Written, Victor's working on a teleportation circle. However, in Legends of Barovia, we've added the uh, Yif Rissel uh, spell. Now the Yif Rissel is an anagram for Fey Circle. And I'll show that to you right here. We do have the player handouts in here, which is really cool. So uh, all of the PDF handouts are in here for the players. So here is the Yif Rissle spell. Now, the players are gonna to have to decipher this. And this is excellent if you're running the Fae Quest, but it's great if you're not as well. This spell scroll creates a 30 second temporary teleportation circle to one of the three Fae uh, shrines. Those are the stone circles in Barovia. There's a stone circle, as you know, behind the bone grinder. There's a stone circle uh, that's in the, the uh, Swamp of Perez, and then there's one on top of Yester Hill. These are the three Fey shrines, the Forest Fey behind the Bone Grinder, Water or Swamp Fey in Perez, and then the Mountain Fey up on Yester Hill. If the players decipher this, they'll be able to uh, cast the spell, last 30 seconds, and it teleports them to that location. Even if you're not running the Fey quest, this is a great spell scroll for your players to find. Now, Victor has it right now because if they decipher this, this allows them to move across Barovia fairly quickly. 
They can only use it, I believe, once per day. Now, in here are the instructions in here, as well as the translations, if we go down to Victor's workroom. The translation of this, and the players can figure out, it's not too difficult of a puzzle to translate. It's a, it's a simple replacement key puzzle to be able to figure out. It translates to, the teleportation spell of the Fae only works if one knows the secret of the three Fae signs. Draw a teleportation circle of the Fane you wish to visit and recite the Fae name into the Fane it will take you. So the first symbol here is the forest Fane, the next one is the mountain Fane, and the third one is the water Fane. So you would draw this symbol in a teleportation circle and it works for 30 seconds and allows them to teleport. Now, if they do it incorrectly, they, they draw the, the symbol wrong or they draw the right symbol but they say the wrong Fane, they will suffer 3d10 worth of necrotic damage and the teleportation circle uh, will vanish and won't work. Now it only lasts for 30 seconds. So I wanted to create a theater of the mind map that allowed you to use this teleportation circle. Let's check it out right here. So here it is right here. And the first thing you're gonna notice is there's like a light growing on in the middle of the circle. And this is on the floor uh, in the attic where Victor is working on. And Victor is trying to figure out how to use this. Remember, he's he's learned some magic. He is trying to figure out this. He's found the scroll at the wizard's tower and he's trying to, to figure out how to use this teleportation circle. And we know if you read the guide, well, the first one that tried it out was the butler and well, he kind of half disintegrated and Isaac had to get rid of the remains. So he's trying to get this teleportation circle to work because if you step into it and it's wrong, it doesn't work. Now, the way this works is you can put your player tokens, I'll put Victor on here as well. Put your player tokens on here and the players will be able to see this blue square as you tell the players in that blue square is actually, you know, it's a teleportation circle, but in the blue square, something could happen if the teleportation circle is activated. Right now it's not activated. So that means any character that steps into the circle, nothing happens. Now, when Victor or the players uh, cast and finish casting a teleportation circle, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna double click on this and you get that light, that sound. Any character that steps into the circle at this point, including an NPC like Victor, disappears. Now it's up to you to decide if they materialize at the forest fame behind the bone grinder or if they disintegrate. You know, I ran this and some suggestions in there is, you know, Victor, if he's hostile with the players, he's trying to escape and he casts this and he jumps into it. And you can decide if, if he disintegrates or if he ends up at one of the Fade Shrines if he cast it, it, cast it correctly. So this allows you to have a theater of the mind map and incorporate a visual thing of teleporting in and out. Now, again, as I said, when the teleportation circle only lasts for 30 minutes, the players can walk over it, nothing's gonna happen. It's only going to be, and it only lasts for 30 seconds when you double click this and any character that stands into this uh, disappears. I really like this effect. It's really simple uh, to do. I'm going to be, you're going to probably be seeing more of these uh, uh, as I upgrade and update the Foundry Adventure module. So this is the one I really like, but I'm saving the best for last. So. If we look at the Burgermeister's upper floor, there's a room over here, and you know the room, it's the one with the bridal ground, and there's a mirror in there. Rules is written, there's this kind of, in my personal opinion, kind of a convoluted thing where you can call this assassin on the mirror and everything, and it kind of seems disjointed unless you're familiar with the old Ravenloft lore. Well, I changed this, and in this location, there is a mirror, and it was gifted to uh, the Burgermeister on his wedding by Vasily von Holtz. None other than, you know who that is. Uh, I'll let you figure that out if you don't know. But it's actually secretly a magic mirror. This The mirror itself has a spell called the Looking Glass spell, and it requires two mirrors. So you have one mirror and there's another mirror somewhere else. And when you say the magic incantation, you're able to see through your mirror and out the mirror, wherever that mirror is, what is on the other side of the mirror for 30 seconds. Now, when the players enter this room, if they are not searching for the mirror, or if they find the mirror, they'll realize it's magic. And on a, a successful DC-12 investigation check, they're gonna realize that on this mirror, uh, uh, etched into the gold leaf on this mirror is a poem. Uh, it's a magic incantation. 
Now the poem reads, uh, it's actually a poem by Robert Louis Stevenson called The Looking Glass River. And the poem reads, we can see our colored faces floating on the shaken pool down in cold places, dim and very cool. As soon as you say that, we have actually some actual magic happen. So what you're gonna do here, there's a box down here below, a gray box. This is where you can put your player character so they can see the mirror. Now, as a GM or DM, you're gonna see a little bit of ghosting in the mirror. The players can't see that. That's just to let you know that there's some stuff going on in the mirror. So if the, if the players recite the uh, incantation correctly, if they discover it, you're gonna double click on the spell. Check this out. What the players are seeing is room K42, the King's Chamber in Ravenloft. The other mirror is sitting in Ravenloft in the King's Chamber. Now, the players can see this picture, but as a DM, you might want to elaborate, describe what's going on. Maybe Gratuta is laying there on the bed, or perhaps Strahd and Rodadin are having a conversation in here. It only lasts 30 seconds, but you're now able to see through this mirror. However, there is a catch as there always is with these kinds of magic things. If someone's on the other side of that mirror and they're aware that the mirror is a magic looking glass mirror with a looking glass spell, there's a 50% chance that they will notice that they're being spied on, that it's been activated and someone's looking at them. And they can turn around and notice that and then they can say the, the, uh, the, the poem, the incantation poem and see through it and then see you. So there's only one person that knows this spell, obviously, because it was Vasily, obviously, that gave this gift to spy on the Burgermaster. Remember, he's spying on the Burgermaster. Vasily and Strahd are aligned with uh, Lady Walker, so they want to keep an eye on what's going on in the Burgermaster. But there's a chance that Strahd catches you using this. And this is what happens if Strahd catches you. Check this out. Ah, the audacity of mortals thinking they can peek into the depths of my domain unseen. How utterly amusing. <laughs> you crave knowledge like moths to a flame unaware of the scorching consequences that await. Such a fragile notion in this abyss of despair. But know this, foolhardy adventures, Barovia is a treacherous place. Every step you take carries a weighty cost. Curiosity can be a perilous companion in these shadowed lands. Be wary of where you tread, for danger lurks in every corner. Remember, brave souls, hope is a fragile thread in this realm of eternal night. The darkness here devours even the strongest of aspirations. <laughs> I really loved making that. That's just so cool. Now, I purposely set up Strahd's dialogue because in an ambiguous way, uh, not to be too antagonistic, but also a warning. So depending on what's going on in your campaign, it kind of fits into any scenario. Now there's an alternative way to run this. Perhaps the players just overlook the mirror, they don't check the mirror, and they're in this room. You can just have Strahd activate the mirror and then give the players this warning and let them know it's a magic mirror, and then the players can investigate and maybe spy back and see uh, K42, the king's chamber. I really like doing this. Monk's Act of Tile really allows me to create more engaging elements, whether it's in that vampire attack that you saw in the Coffin Maker or using Theater of the Mind maps like this. I really hope you like these enhancements that I've made to these Foundry Adventure modules. If you do, smash that like button. Let me know that you're enjoying these enhancements. I really enjoy doing this, and I wouldn't be able to do it without your support. So until next time, this is Parm King. May all your rolls be critically successful.